Hi, my name is Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. In this video, we're going to introduce pressure. And to start talking about it, um, we're going to run a simulation. Now, the simulation that you're seeing here is freely available on the FET website. We've used their stuff before. Um, one thing that I would suggest that you do before you try playing with the simulation on your own or before you watch this video is make sure you read section 9.1 of the OpenStax textbook. Uh, it'll make more sense. So this simulation is kind of cool. It um, lets us have some idea to visualize what's actually happening with the gas and when we're talking about pressure. Um, pressure is a thing that we get, we throw around a bunch. Uh, if you have a car, maybe you've checked your tire pressure, etc. Um, we're going to want to, at this point in time, do some conceptualization, um, on an atomic scale about what's actually going on, because now we've got these firm ideas of what atoms look like. Um, we've talked about the electrons and yada, yada, yada. Now it's time to say, okay, if this is what atoms and molecules look like, are how they behave, let's start applying that to the physical forms that we find matter in. And the first one, the easiest one to start discussing is uh, gases. Are gases? Whatever. So in this simulation, there's going to be a number of things for us to look for. Um, first off, we've got this box here where we're going to put our gas eventually. We have this pressure gauge um, over here to the side. Now, your book goes through nicely a couple different ways of measuring out pressure. Uh, it's got different pressure units, etc. cetera. Um, Table 9.1 is what it is. Um, and I'll actually just bring that up here real quick to show everybody. Second, table 9.1. The thing I hope that you realize uh, when you look here at table 9.1 is that this is really just a bunch of unit conversions. So that stuff that we did back in chapter one, the stuff that we did back in uh, chapter two, and really the entirety of the course, um, these are going to be unit conversion problems. So you're going to be given units in one thing, and you're going to be asked to convert to units in another thing. Go to this table, um, and you can look up your different unit conversions and then do the math accordingly, like we have the entire rest of this course. Um, the ones of note that if I were you, I would pay attention to are Atmospheres ATM, because we're going to end up using that one a lot in class this semester. Um, the Tor and Millimeters of Mercury are pretty much the exact same thing. So the unit conversion there, even though they don't have it written out for the Millimeters of Mercury to what it would be in ATM, um, a millimeter of mercury is effectively equivalent to one millimeter of mercury is effectively effectively equal to one tor. So if you go back up here to the top, then one atmosphere would be effectively equal to one millimeter of mercury. Or I'm sorry, 760 millimeters of mercury. This is unit conversions, right? So you're going to be doing a lot of unit conversion problems. You just have to keep track of what goes in the numerator and what goes in the denominator. So let's go back here now um to the example and that's a manometer i'm sorry a barometer we're going to talk about that in a second here's our example so let's start thinking about what's actually happening inside of a gas so we're going to turn on this thing called the collision counter um, the reason we're going to turn that on is because at the end of the day pressure is really just force divided by area and we can think about force divided by area with respect to a gas, largely based on the number of collisions that are happening on the outer walls of the container that a gas is in. The higher the number of collisions, the more pressure we're likely to have. Um, and so let's go ahead and let's check that out. So let's put one pump of our stuff in and, um, We've got our various gas in here now. So our gas particles are, notice how they're moving around their gases. So um, that means they have no definite shape um, and they are going to fill 
the volume of whatever container that they're in. So we can see that the gas particles are in constant motion, um, which we've talked about before and with respect to temperature and absolute zero. The particles are going to keep going in motion here um, until otherwise stopped. The pressure here we're measuring right now is in atmospheres. This nicely lets us go to kilopascals if we want to, which is fine. Um, the If we start a collision counter here, we're seeing for a period of time, um, the number of collisions that are hitting during that said period of time. Um, again, pressure is really going to be that count of collisions. We're going to get into uh, a relationship between some of this other stuff that's here on the screen, such as temperature and what that does with pressure uh, here in a little bit. The first, the, right now, what we want to drive home is more collisions, more pressure. So if we pump in more gas, we're going to have more particles. If we have more particles, we'll have more collisions. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. And indeed our pressure does increase. Now if we open our container and we let get the gas particles escape, um, we should notice that the pressure starts dropping. The reason that the pressure starts dropping is because we have fewer particles to hit the sidewalls of said container. And that is a, so the thing I, I'm wanting you to realize, one of the key things I'm wanting you to realize here um, about this from this simulation is gas particles are always in motion. They're not sticking next to one another, um, not in an ideal scenario. They kind of go in these straight lines until otherwise they bounce and hit something. So like right now the mouse is following this one particle and it's hitting and it's going along like this. And it's just going to keep going and it's going to have some amount of energy um, and it's going to just keep on going. Boom, it hit the wall. The wall, that collision, is what we think of as pressure. More collisions, higher pressure. And so you can go ahead and start thinking to yourselves, well, how are the ways that I can manipulate the number of collisions? Can I make the particles go faster? Can I just have more particles? Can I change the volume of the container? If we make the volume of the container way bigger or way smaller, what's that going to do? Um, that kind of thing. Let's talk about that barometer now real quick, because this simulation's cool and all. It's not where we started, though, when we start measuring pressures. Um, excuse me. A barometer is a tool for us to measure how many collisions are happening uh, from gas, like all the gas that's above and outside over here, uh, with a liquid that's down here. So the way that the, these things are created is you fill this tube and it's got to be pretty tall for you to get like meaningful data out of it. Um, you fill this tube with a really dense liquid. Now, um, like traditionally back in the day, you would use something like mercury. And so that unit of millimeters of mercury equaling one tor, um, that comes from the idea here that this, we would take this dish, We'd fill it with liquid mercury. We take this really long tube. The tube would be like, I don't know, 800 centimeters, something along those lines. The tube would be completely filled with mercury. And then you'd real quickly flip it over and you would put the surface or the opening of the tube underneath the surface of the mercury that was in the dish. If you've ever played in like a bathtub, you ever played in a pool and you're taking like a cup of water or something like that, um, take it underneath the surface of the water and then you, you know, get it completely filled so there's no air in there. And then you turn the cup upside down and then you try to lift it up. You can feel like there's like this kind of almost like cavitation that's forming in your cup 
as you turned it upside down and you're lifting the cup then, not where it, the water has poured out the bottom yet, but you kind of lifted it up to the surface, but not quite out of the surface, you can feel like, like, oh, there's like a little bit of suction or something here. What's happening is the liquid inside the cup is staying in that cup due to atmospheric pressure pushing down on the surface, there's pressure pushing down on the surface of the pool water, or in this case, the mercury. And then those mercury molecules or pool water are pushing and keeping the liquid inside your cup, or in this case, the barometer. We can measure with a ruler the height of the water, or the, in this case, the mercury, relative to the surface of the mercury. Now this gap up here at the top of this thing, um, that's going to be a vacuum. There's not going to be any gas in there. Maybe there's mercury vapor. It's very minuscule if, if there's any. Um, I mean, there's got a little bit. It's negligible. There's not air in there. That's a vacuum that's being formed. The height difference that we're able to take from up here at the top to down here at the bottom, that is our pressure measurement back in the day. That's how barometers worked. Um, the book then goes through for you and it talks a bit about uh, manometers and how that is a variation of a barometer, but it is specifically not measuring atmospheric pressure, it's measuring the pressure of a gas inside of a container but it works very similar to this. So that's barometers. That's kind of an introduction to gases, um, how they're like a way to start thinking about how those particles are moving about. Um, and it is a little bit of a discussion about um, unit conversions because that's really what 9.1's 9 tenths about is really just doing your unit conversions. Hope that helps. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.